Alright, should be one of the last few games in the Wooster before we get our legendary module. Not that I'm planning on mounting it. If you're familiar with me, you might know that I prefer to run my Wooster AA build, but that's neither here nor there. Tier 10 matchmaking into tier 8, so 8 to 10, we're top tier. See of Fortune Domination. Enemy has some pretty fearsome ships, including a bunch of Jean Bart blacks. Someone complaining about pay to win players, but at least, you know, they're funding the player base, I suppose. And the Jean Bart is a currently removed ship, so if you're really, really a big fan of the Jean Bart, I can kind of see it. Not saying it's monetarily sound, but. These things do happen. Anyhow, the tier 10 American Tech Tree light cruiser, the Worcester. A bit of a power creep state, not as strong as she used to be, especially compared to when she was first released. Sector in here to spray down some of the implacable planes, but with each implacable rocket plane at about 2300 health. Uh, not exactly an easy task. Anyhow, the, the Worcester comes after the Seattle. Sits at a rather a light 45,000 hit points without survivability expert. And has a lovely 9.8 concealment with a 9 kilometer radar, so not able to stealth radar unlike the Cleveland. Well, actually, the Cleveland can't stealth radar either. It's 9, 3, and 9 kilometers, but it's kind of close. But the detection gap between your radar and your detectability range has increased at this point. But in exchange, you do get 12 rapid fire rifles. Now, 12 rifles plus you have the same number of rifles as the triples, as the four triples of the Cleveland. However, trying to get some screening onto this Alaska. The reload is quite a bit shorter, you can see even without reload module, which the Cleveland doesn't have access to anyway. Sitting at a nice healthy 4 second reload, or 4.5 in my case. Now the gun angles are kinda bad, which is one of the sh problems with the ship, compared to ships that have replaced it in the kind of fire support rules, such as the Smolensk and well, Colbert and such. The gun angles are kinda poor. Setting a fire on one of those two Alaskas. I'm showing quite a bit of broadside to get all my six of my rifles to bear, so I am actually quite vulnerable to a ship like the Alaska. So you will see me easily get punished. Right there. Citadel spaces are relatively well protected, like pretty low in the water, but you still will get punished. My engine's currently broken, but since that first Alaska is now fucked off, I did get a permanent fire onto him. It's not so bad. Targeted by four, though. So at this point, I'm going to push forward. I believe those battleships, including those very angry Jambars in the distance, might make an attempt on my life. Lucky to not get citadeled by that Alaska there, who did manage to squeeze off some shells into my hull. Now, unlike the rather short 15-6 range of the Cleveland and the Seattle. The Worcester does upgrade to 16.5, so you do get a bit more range pushing up to tier 10, taking some more glancing over penetrations. You can see no special armor or anything in particular, unlike, say, the Alexander Nevsky, which is a light cruiser, which gets away with, well, kind of gets away with uh, having his cake and eating it too. In terms of being relatively Lightly armored, but having those 40mm armor strikes, and also having torpedoes for close range duels. Firing with just my forward guns, you can see because of this. Uh, I don't believe this is the same as like an ABX or ABC layout. Because these are not super firing, it's something like. I actually don't know the convention, but the turrets are not fully super firing. The first and second turrets at the front, and the fifth and sixth turrets at the back occlude each other at certain angles, so Bowian, you only can use two of your turrets at once. So compared to the forward firepower of both the Seattle and Cleveland, which have access to their full triple turrets, it is at a bit of a disadvantage. You also have to give significant amounts of broadside to use all six of your or all six of your rifles on either front or back, so 
That is kind of what led to me getting punished earlier by that Alaska who citadeled me and broke my engine. Did manage to pick up that uh, Richelieu and the kill there at the very end with just some stray shells using the most of my range. I set a fire on this Alaska here earlier. I'm just gonna do the classic cruiser thing and peek. Now a Des Moines would be, actually be much better in this position, able to make use of his six auto loading turrets, but with a little bit of finessing, I can probably squeeze my front turrets off. Not afraid of broadsiding here since I'm in relative cover, not detected. Now if planes come, of course, that's always going to be quite different. You can see me not really making use of my ra radar that much. The light cruiser 9km radars are quite a bit less offensive than those of the uh, heavy American cruisers with their 10km radars or even the 12km radars of the original Russian heavies. And since you're on a rather squishy hull, you do have to end up playing from cover quite a bit. Now there are some people who play their Worcester open water with a bit of a different setup. Georgia firing at me, don't really want to take any of those 18 inch shell citadels. Gonna slide forward with propulsion module, just in dime. Take some glancing over penetration hits, but we're relatively safe from this position. Gonna reverse back out, playing quite forward at this point, but nothing is particularly pushing me other than this Georgia on my flank, so I'm gonna reverse out while I'm under the effects of radar. I'm gonna try and hide as much as my ship as possible, try and keep this Georgia from potentially sitting me. Looks like he's busy dueling this Jean Bar. My A is going off, don't have time to sector at the moment. He managed to set a fire. And with I of HG, I have 33 millimeters, or actually I think it's 37 millimeters of penetration. Shooting for the nose now, he's quite saturated in that middle section. And I am able to pick up that last frag. Jean Bard, of course, not able to lob shells over this. Someone did try and shoot HE at me, probably the Nevsky. Jean Bard pushing in, which is perfect because he has 32 millimeter plate all over. And I have 37 millimeters of penetration. He can't really see me, so I should be able to safely farm him. Nothing particularly special about the Worcester. In terms of farming battleships, it's always been able to do this. Now in the past, of course, I had a better radar. I think originally the light cruisers had a 10km radar, if I'm not mistaken. This quickly became a 9km radar because uh, radar traps are bad. I haven't used my defensive fire at all this match, which is kind of a pity. But the, Stal the sorry, not Stalingrad, the Implacable hasn't really made the mistake of wandering too close to me. Stalingrad is 6 kilometers from me, by the way, so I do have to be a bit careful, but he doesn't appear to be looking at me. Jean-Bar is now pushing, doesn't want to sit there and get farmed forever. Understandable. I may have to push slightly in. Now you can see that Jean-Bar is nosing in. If he gives me broadside, I would actually switch to AP. There's nothing wrong with the Whisper's AP, and it does in fact have slightly better penetration than Seattle and Cleveland AP, in spite of being the same 6-inch caliber or 152 millimeters for those of you who prefer metric. I'm spotted now that Stalingrad is gonna breach. It's gonna be pretty nose in. I'm Stalingrad's a fairly bad matchup. I'm gonna try and relight that fire and accelerate. Shambart does take a pawn shot at me. Managed to slide my citadel out of the way, so again just taking some over penetrations. It's okay to take some damage. Planes on the other side that I would love to defensive fire for, but don't really have line of sight for my AA. The Worcester is a formidable AA platform, especially if you build for it. In spite of what some people might say. My shells might be able to pick that up? Oh, not quite. The Moskva's shells are a bit faster. We are kind of routing this team. Pretty comfy 130,000 damage from just really farming from this one position. At this point, at this point we're going to push in and take this cap because don't anticipate that we're going to face much opposition. Enemy carrier must be somewhat experienced. He is pre-dropping. He is bottom tier, of course. Although using rockets that only penetrate 27mm of armor versus a 32mm armor 
battleship is questionable at best. I am going to briefly get spotted, going to pop my radar to see if I can see anything. Maybe my hydroacoustic as well, just to be safe. Nevsky is within shooting distance. And I'm behind cover. However, the Nevsky is quite fast, and you can see I have those pretty standard American light cruiser shells, so not very great. Hydro does pick up two of the Cossack's single launch torpedoes, which tells me he's somewhere over here in approximate location. My radar's still running for another 10 seconds. Maybe we can catch him on the end. Cossack not particularly fast when its speed boost is not running. I do you manage to get some glancing hits onto the Nevsky, although I do have to steer away from him now. Not able to catch the Cossack in the end, but that's fine. He's probably just running toward his carrier. My Jean Bart B on my team is probably going to go down, but not before he dispatches the other Jean Bart B. There's a smoke screen there. And seeing as I have nothing better to shoot at, I'm just going to blind fire this guy. Now I could continue to shoot the Nesky, but he's at the very edge of my effective range, so quite have the right height, looks like. Continuing the shred tier 8 aircraft, but it's not particularly impressive of a feat. Nesky outranges me by far, he's not using AP or anything, so I'm not too concerned, still have my last heal charge to hold on to. Cossack is lighting me, but you can see my inferior range compared to the Nesky is going to cause some problems. Nothing I can do about him harassing me. Eventually I'll have to turn away if I get too low. He is forced to angle though, because my battleships will shoot him. Relatively immobile, implacable. I think I'm just gonna free look and lock, and this way I can dodge a little bit. Raining some shells down into that cover position. And I'm taking enough damage where I'm pretty happy to disengage. Looks like the carrier's not moving his hull in the way I thought he would. Nevsky, of course, using its superior ballistics and gun performance to push me away. Do manage to pick up the carrier frag, which is nice. Sadly, one of the Outmatch abilities. It's gonna keep me from being able to finish off that Nevsky. Save my repair until that final fire. I am now out of heals, so the fire could well have been lethal. His last few shells do skim me, but don't quite manage to finish me off. Now I'm not too afraid of dying. The Nevsky is now at 21 kilometers, so having disengaged. Should be fairly safe to take some paw shots at this Cossack, though I have absolutely no expectation of hitting him. Especially at this kind of ranges where he's at my effective, or well beyond my effective maximum range. Worcester really a mid-range combatant, effective between the ranges of about 12 to 8 kilometers. He remains spotted, but honestly, I'm not going to hit him. Yeah, pretty straightforward Worcester game. Nothing particularly special about it. You can see my relatively slow speed compared to the Nevsky also made it so that he could completely dictate the engagement. We did manage to come out of this game with some nice frags, but most of our damage is just farming battleships. But that's pretty much good enough. That is the role the Worcester is relegated in the modern metagame because of, well, other ships have kind of taken over its role. The American heavies are pretty proficient at HE spamming as well, and are quite a bit safer in terms of the angle they can take while doing so. And the Nednevsky, that ship that was hammering me at the back, on the other hand, is able to outrange me quite comfortably and do the open water gunboating thing quite a bit better. 
Oh, we got a Twitch mission. How lovely. For a free container, okay. Anyhow, Worcester. As I said, no, nothing particularly special. Fairly standard light cruiser armor, 25mm nose, 25mm stern, and 25mm upper belt. The deck is 30, so you can bounce some amount of shells of 406 caliber or lower. Uh, but guns like that Georgia that shot at me can quite easily citadel you. Now, the belt is 127mm, so pretty decent cruiser armor. However, if you strip away all that, you can see you have a rather large waterline citadel that stretches between the bar bits, just slightly raised above the waterline. So moving from the rather comfy Cleveland citadel, which is also pretty much waterline, but as you can see, only in the midsection, the bar bits are all below water. You have uh, exchanged some of your overall safeness for firepower. You do also have to give a lot more broadside, as you saw early on in that last match when I got punished by that Alaska, to use all of your guns. It is worth it though with that 4.6 kilometer or 4.6 second reload and improved range of 16.7, 16.7 6, uh, 16, rather than 16.5, as I said, so my apologies there. Now I'm building for a A in my build, because, well, why play the Worcester? If you're not going to build it as an AA ship, it is a dedicated AA cruiser. Some of its anti-surface roles have been supplanted by other ships, as I mentioned, so... It really does remain an AA ship. I actually had a fantastic uh, FDR game here, a game against an FDR, where I shot down a fair number of planes. 16 doesn't seem like a lot. Uh, you can see I farmed quite a bit in this match. But my point is that the Worcester has a rather formidable AA damage output. 70,000 AA damage, and we did manage to kill a substantial amount of real FDR aircraft. Anyhow, with my build, you get up to 512 continuous damage, which is quite nice. Most of that damage is concentrated in that medium range aura with the 76mm long range mounts. And as well, you get the six flag puffs, which get improved by defensive fire, and in my case, also the slot 6 module. So the way I have my Worcester kitted out is don't mind the spotting aircraft mod. I was experimenting a little bit with a uh, running spotter plane because, as you saw, I didn't actually get that much use out of the radar because it's very difficult to push in with the Worcester these days. It's kind of more of a late game consumable, and if you're going to push in with a late game consumable, Hydro is usually good enough to get the job done for most cases. Now, there are obviously cases where the superior 9km range of the radar is far more useful, but don't mind this. Uh, I would typically recommend Main Armaments Modification 1, as you saw. At some points during that match, I did have several guns knocked out when I was under fire, so the turrets are quite fragile. Slot 2, I'm taking the improved radar for an extra 8 seconds, bumps you from 40 to 48 seconds. If you don't have it, I would probably take engine room protection. Uh, when I did get Citadel that one time, you did see that my engine went down quite readily. In slot 3, your turrets turn quite quickly already, so you don't really need main battery mod 3, or main battery mod 2, sorry. And then AA Guns Modification is a kind of trash fire module right now in its current iteration, so I just take improved accuracy to get a bit less spray on the twin turrets. Twin Ships with twin turrets do tend to have a bit more wonky dispersion patterns, so getting aiming systems there is pretty nice. Plot 4, a pretty standard light cruiser uh, module, rather. I'm taking Propulsion module. Plot 5. Taking concealment. Now, you, if you're playing the open water builds, I have seen some people take steering gears to accompany the propulsion module, so it's kind of up to you, but for my use cases, concealment module is the most safe, and in slot 6, I'm taking the AA module. Now, the standard module to take is reload. Take that 4.6 second reload down to about just 4 seconds. But I'm taking AA module, so what it does is it gives you 15% continuous. Uh, the Worcester, by the way, has no secondaries at all, so that first part doesn't do anything. But it gives you 15% continuous, 15% extra damage to your flak, and it gives you an extra 2 puffs of flak, so it bumps you from 6 to 8 when you have your defensive fire active. Now do note that if you get the 
legendary module that I am currently grinding for, it does go in slot 6, so it's a bit of a disappointment for me. Someone who wants to run this AA build, I'd actually much rather sacrifice some concealment for the module. Now what the module does, if you do end up using it, it goes in slot 6 and it's basically superintendent on a module. It gives you plus 1 charge to... Oh, I can't preview it here. I have to use the armory. Okay. Well, what the module does is it gives you plus one charge to each of your consumables, and I believe it also improves the cooldown on several of your consumables as well, such as the defensive AA fire. So if we look here, minus 20% to ship consumable reload, minus 20% to your sector AA, like just like that AA module. I guess if you get this module and use it, you can combine it with that slot 3 AA module and get a minus 40% prep time, which is not bad. You can sector quite a bit more in that case. It should push you down from 10 seconds is the base default, so this would make it 8 seconds, and combined with the other module puts it down to 6 seconds, which is pretty good when it's actually in use, and it also gives you plus 1 to consumable charges, so it's a free superintendent. So pretty good module. Uh, this does allow you to skip superintendent in your build if you want, by the way. You can see I'm currently not taking superintendent. This is a very standard American light cruiser build, although normally in high tier, rather than having BFT like I do for just AA damage, you would have superintendent. But this is a fairly standard IFHE light cruiser build. So priority target into adrenaline rush, your turrets are fast, into demolition expert, into IFHE, and then concealment. And then for me, I'm going back for basics fire training to get that 10% AA, and just a jack of all trades. In the past, I've run preventative maintenance plus expert loader to get a bit extra turret durability and to get on demand AP, but at this current moment, because the reload is pretty manageable at 4.6, I'm not running expert loader, and the Worcester, unlike a Des Moines or Salem or something, uh, uses its AP much less. I can't recall actually using AP in that last game. Uh, but you can make use of the AP. It's actually quite strong for light cruiser AP. In this particular game, I believe, I did make use of quite a bit of armor piercing, about 60,000 here, so it's not insubstantial. You tend to use it against just targets that broadside, so it's like a 5.9k chunk here, 4k chunk here, 14k chunk here, got another 16k into the Moskva here, because he was broadsiding. So Worcester AP is actually quite serviceable. Wasn't able to get a use case for it, I was able to show it off, but it is definitely there. Now that was a pretty static game, so I'm going to requeue and see if we can get something a little more dynamic and see if we can make use of some more of our consumables. We didn't end up pushing until the very end of the game there, and then we we're pushing into a Nevsky, which obviously was not very favorable considering the nature of our shell ballistics versus the nature of the Nevsky's shell ballistics. Alright, another carrier game. It seems carriers are fairly popular at this current moment. Pier tier 10s, however. Two destroyers, neither of which are particularly fearsome. Two Stalingrads to worry about, though. And in terms of battleships that overmatch our 30mm deck, there's a Kremlin, Yamato, and Thunderer, so 3 out of 5 of the battleships. We're definitely in for a bit of an experience. Now, Northern Mars is a pretty shit map in my opinion, especially on Epicenter, because this asymmetrical cap design makes it awkward on this far left side to really get anything done at all. Thankfully for me, I've spawned on the far right side, which means I do have some island cover if I want to make use of it. So outside of the two Stalingrads and the two destroyers and the battleships, well, outside of their whole team, you know, nothing really too much to worry about. Enemy Hakuryu launching with torpedo bombers first. I would be very happy to eat those up with my defensive fire. At 512 continuous per second. 
definitely do more than enough. He's pretty far into my aura, so I'm actually going to defensive fire and commit. Hoping to try and catch him with flak on the way out. But don't quite manage to get there. I think he popped a heal. Did it, since I did 3,000 damage, but I failed to shoot down an aircraft and he didn't lose anything. But at least I got a heal consumable out of him. Now, these, these are things that are kind of hard to notice. As a service ship player, it looks kind of like, oh, my AA is not really doing anything. But as a carrier player, I can kind of tell when something happened. I'm going to leave my AA on. Normally, you would reset it. But my AA radius is large enough. I'm shooting to get into that gearing smoke, by the way. It's hovering on the border, avoiding my long-range AA. He's going to touch it briefly when he comes in to re-engage. Sadly, my defensive fire has now expired. But at least I forced that consumable out from him, so even if I'm not shooting down these planes, someone is going to be shooting down those planes. Looks like he lost about four or five. There's Montana in range, and there is a battleship that shot at me. Looks like probably the Kremlin. Or actually, probably the GK from out of my line of sight. So I did get slammed there, wasn't paying attention. I was too busy talking about planes. Let's see if I can get some retribution. Do have to be careful of the Stalingrad. And what else do we have? Oh, okay, there's a Worcester there. The GK is fairly well armored, so he shatters a lot of my IFHE shells. 50mm plate versus 37mm penetration means I'd much rather shoot that Worcester where possible. This guy, this Montana, has 38mm midsection plate, but at least most of his extremities are 32, so. Oh, Colbert. Colbert can actually be citadeled by his own 6 inch shells, so I'm gonna try for one cell, but he's already turning out, so. Not too much to do there. I break one of those Colbert turrets, which are extremely fragile. You have to be careful, I'm sitting full broadside. And if there's a destroyer here to mirror mine, well, I'm gonna be in trouble, so. I'm gonna pop my Hydro. Got a good chunk out of that Colbert. He does heal quite a bit, though. The Colbert has kind of like the American battleship heal, so he heals an abnormal percentage. Destroyer is up. Not able to catch that guy, unfortunately. Eight seconds on my radar, or on my smoke, rather. Let's see if I can catch him on the radar. Can't quite get the lock on. I'm gonna try and slip off. Oh, not quite able to get the right lead on that Marceau. Ducking through smoke uh, even as it fades. That Wooster should be in quite a bit of trouble. I'm gonna turn away from those battleships and harass this enemy of Worcester. You can see the high rate of fire makes it so that it's actually fairly easy to tunnel. Which can be one of the challenges with shooting and steering, which is why playing from a bit longer range is sometimes people's preferred means of playing the Worcester. are so harassing me. The slow lazy arcs, however, does do mean that I can arc over this island and continue to harass this Worcester, even though he's in cover for a fair number of ships. Marceau ducks behind cover, so I'm actually gonna avoid being hard spotted. Now he's out again now. I'm gonna avoid firing there. Looks like no one is shooting him for some reason. I have to give substantial lead, miss because he's running his speed boost. Turning out and away, do manage to clip him with another 2,000. So at least that's 2,000 he won't be getting back. Montana beyond my visual range. Or rather than being beyond my visual range, sorry, beyond my actual gun range. I have glided back toward the border in this particular match. And you can see the enemy team owns the entire ring. And I can't really do anything in this position. I actually need the destroyers to push into the center, but the enemy has put a Kremlin in the center. Now he's probably going to die, but the problem is the points continue to tick from that center cap quite rapidly. Epicenter really does require you get into the ring. Enemy Stalingrad, of course, making it difficult for my destroyers because there's a Stalingrad, and then there's a Rugamo. 
inside that actual cap, which means if the Stalingrad lights you up of a radar as a fragile destroyer, well, that guy is going to have a good chance to rip you up. Okay, GK just fired. Those Marcel Torps should range out. You can see me here using this island to fire openly, even while moving. Controlling my range. Now this does mean I have to sit fairly far back. Finally get a fire. Okay, GK is now out in the open, so if I fire I will be spotted. So I'm going to make sure I turn first. Okay, Marceau is in a pretty shit spot. Score another fire. So I'm going to switch over. You can see that GK immediately shooting me. Oh, actually, those are just his secondaries. <laughs> Oops. Missed my first shot on the Marceau. The lead significantly. Putting four shots into him now. He's inside my radar range, however, as he fades, so this time I am able to make use of the radar, taking some damage from the GK, but this was anticipated. This is one of the sacrifices you have to make to use your radar. It's not a great offensive tool, as I mentioned. It does put your ship in large amounts of danger. Not only does the blister have not great firing angles, but it has other problems as well. Trying to score some fires onto the stern of that GK, he's now pushing as a result. Popping my Hydra there because, of course, I'm concerned about those 9km Marceau Torps. Anyway, Whisper wailing on my team from his position of cover. I have to be very careful that GK can easily dev strike me. He's looking at me. Or looking toward me at the very least. Okay. He does drop. Marceau coming out, but I was in the middle of a reload cycle. There, not having the AA module would have been very nice. Okay, he does die. Thanks partially to our radar kind of pushing him out. And now the enemy does not appear to have ships in the center. Okay, I don't know why those shells went into the island. There's also a full APDB squadron coming from the Hekaryu toward me, so keeping an eye out on that. So he's diving now. He's in the immunity frames. In the immunity frames. Wait for the numbers to appear. Now we sector. Now by uh, making an effort to eliminate ships, we did miss out on that Worcester kill, but it doesn't really matter. You can see that kill differential quickly swung that 600 to 400 point advantage the enemy team had. Very briefly. I'm on my last heal now, so you'll note- Oh shit! Okay, did not notice that Montana took a paw shot at me while I was talking. But you'll notice I'm pretty squish, and the HP I lose is kind of expensive. So use those two radar opportunities there on the Marceau when I make th made those dives were quite dangerous. You do really have to think about how much HP you're willing to trade for a given position at any moment. I think nothing else is in range. It's just a cold bear, really. This, this is pretty dangerous because if I do get spotted eventually by the cold bear, uh, I'm basically full broadside to that Montana. But this is a pretty good opportunity. The plane's spotting me. Do get a fire onto this ARP Yamato. Can't tell if he's. I think he's just pushing in. He DCP'd my fire, which is tragic for me. I try and reverse out, see if I can get some more fires. Looks like he's pushing forward. Oh, he's coming up. Okay. You can see on the minimap, I managed to relight my fire. I'm using the minimap to guide my shells. That Montana that was on my broadside is now dead now, however. Which is not bad. ARP Yamato does dispatch someone. He's pretty broadside, so I'm going to put some AP in. Although he's liable to die. Okay, I set another fire, so that's a lethal fire there. I am able to participate in the cap, but the kill gets kind of stolen from me somewhat. Although I will say I did not put that much damage into him, so it's not really a kill steal. So this game was pretty good. We got to play 
relatively safely. Oh, broken engine Colbert with no last stand. If you play cruisers like the Colbert and Smolensk, these super lights, I actually recommend you take a destroyer captain or a pseudo destroyer captain, which has the last stand because it does help a lot. They have no armor and they do end up taking a lot of damage. But anyway, back to the Worcester. 132,000 damage. This game's so pretty similar to the last time. No kills this time and a few less fires. Uh, in spite of the hack hovering less briefly, only those three plain kills, but we did probably deal decent amounts of damage overall. Three incapacitations and one capture. Team score wise, you can see, even though we didn't get, end up getting any kill credit, the damage we put onto destroyers and various other targets was enough to push us to the top at 1957. If you go to the detailed report wise, did again did not was not able to fire that much AP and did a lot of fire damage and HE damage. Only sixteen thousand plane damage in this case, so sixteen thousand plane damage is about eight Hakaryu planes worth of HP, so not too bad. It's a shame we didn't get to use too much of the AA. Good amount of damage into the Marceau, probably contributing to a large amount of our experience as well as the twenty K we put into the Worcester. But all our personal performance issues aside, I think we did fine. It just wasn't a particularly exciting game. Okay, okay, I get it. There's a Black Friday sale. Fuck off. Uh, the Worcester was able to actually be a bit more aggressive in this case, which was nice. But overall, you saw, like whenever I made even a small mistake and a battleship kind of fired at me, the Worcester is quite squishy, and so she takes a large sum of damage, so... Any kind of positional error is quickly punished. This camouflage, by the way, is a permanent camo that was available in an event with the release of the ship line. I don't think it's ever been available ever since. So, sadly, if you want to go from your vanilla Worcester to something a bit more fancy, I don't believe this camo has been made available since. I actually don't really like these kinds of camos typically, but this one's not too obstinate ostentatious. It's mainly just the blue highlights and then the sharks at the front. I actually do kind of like the sharks underneath the bow, or underneath the bridge rather, but I'm not a fan of this big broad shark decal on the bow. It's a bit tacky in my opinion. But you know, it's pretty cool camo overall and it was available for free back in the day, so so those of you who like the look of it, well, I'm sorry, that's not available. And you can see overall that even though I have my Worcester built as an AA ship, her surface performance remains quite adequate. I've moved away from a fully anti-surface performance uh, ship because, well, there are better ships for that in this day and age. The former long-range fire spam, suppressive fire, role has been taken up by ships such as this guy over here, the Smolensk. <laughs> what a lovely ship. My Smolensk, as I mentioned, is being a destroyer-like cruiser, is using a destroyer captain. In this case, I'm using a Grossi captain who doesn't run last stand. Uh, but just as an example, if, um, if I was playing a less greedy Grossovoy build, I would definitely be running that last stand. You can see that AFT does help a lot of the destroyer caliber guns as well to get pretty absurd range, frankly. But my Colbert would probably run my Clever Captain. So the Clever Captain is mostly suited to this. Uh, one of the main things you can do with running the Clever Captain in this case is running Honoré, uh, who does end up giving you extra fire chance, but really you get the BFT, the AFT, Concealment Expert, Last Stand. And then the Improved Survivability Expert does actually help out a lot. It pushes your HP from a pretty low 3,500 up to a relatively okay 40,000, just a bit less than a Zao without SE. So the Colbert ends up working very well with what I would consider to be a fairly standard clever captain. Anyhow, this was supposed to be a Worcester commentary, so that was a bit of a segue and aside, but with that said, Worcester is still a pretty decent ship in spite of everything that's happened to her. Uh, definitely kind of missing out compared to our glory days. 
and finds more use as an AA picket ship in my personal opinion than anything else, but still outputs plenty of damage and is quite capable. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you all later. Cheers.